Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this video, we are going to talk about cell cycle checkpoints. Okay, so let me write cell cycle checkpoints. So by this name, you know what checkpoints are, right? Normally in day-to-day -day life, we know what checkpoints are and why they are present. A checkpoint generally is present for the transport or vehicles, right? So we go through a checkpoint, the checkpoint stop the car and they search, they check, check for something something for what may be license or things. So if you show that license or card, the checkpoint will open and it will allow you to pass. So checkpoint can be of your document like license, checkpoint can be of uh, some toll or money. So the thing is in cell cycle, cell cycle is also a continuous process inside of our body. Cells are constantly receiving signals in order to proliferate or grow in terms of growth signals, growth hormones. Okay. And once they receive the signals, the only thing that they can do is that grow and divide. But remember, once they receive the signal, they start to grow and they start to divide. But that must, there must be some sort of regulation, some sort of regulation that uh, will ultimately regulate how exactly the cell will divide. Because if this, this is not regulated and if the cell is beyond our regulation of growth, cell continues to grow and divide and divide then after some times there will be a mass of cells, a tumor will form and that tumor may gain different properties that can make it malignant in nature or cancerous in nature which will not be good for the health for the organism. So what we intend to talk now is how exactly cell cycle checkpoints work and what are cell cycle checkpoints. So like that uh, day to day life like the vehicle checkpoints, cell cycle checkpoints are also specific time frame during the cell cycle where the cell checks for some things. What are those things? Let's talk about that. To understand checkpoints in details, you need to understand a basic concept of cell cycle phases. And cell cycle phases here, what are the different phases we are talking about? We are talking about, uh, let's take uh, the center, we are talking about this is the M phase, this is M phase and let's say this is G1 phase, this is S phase, this is, sorry, this is G2 phase. Okay, Different phases of cell cycle. And in the M phase is the place where prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, this, this uh, stages continue to perform. Prophase, anaphase, uh, prophase, metaphase, sorry, anaphase and telophase. Okay. And then G1 is G2. S is the phase where DNA, DNA replication takes place. Okay. G1 and G2 are the gap or growth phases where actually they produce protein. Protein, protein synthesis is done. Okay, protein synthesis is done, transcription is done, all these things are transcription and all these things are done in G1, G2 phases. These are the basics of the cell cycle phases. So without further ado, let me write down the checkpoint names here. So the first one is known as G1 S checkpoint. Okay, G1 S checkpoint, the very first one. Then there is intra S checkpoint, third one is G2 M checkpoint, fourth one is spindle assembly, spindle assembly checkpoint. These are the four different checkpoints that are present and where they are located, let me write them down here in this picture. So the first one G1 S checkpoint is present in this particular section, this is G1 S checkpoint. Uh, the transition stage between G1 and S phase. Then there is a checkpoint almost at the end here near about this is where the S phase checkpoint is present intra S then G2M checkpoint is present here and the last checkpoint is present before anaphase that is between metaphase and anaphase okay spindle assembly checkpoint. These are the four different checkpoints 1, 2, 3, 4 okay. These are the position of four different checkpoints and these four different checkpoints are involved in detecting or checking specific things. They are not checking same things, they are checking different things in different time frame. So the first one G1S checkpoint, it is involved in checking very vital thing whether the cell is ready enough to move and go for a round of cell cycle or not. Okay? If they are not ready to go for a round of cell cycle, then they will be prevented to move into the 
G1, they they will be prevented to move from G1 to S phase, go into the S phase because S phase is the synthesis phase, the DNA replication phase. And if the cell is not ready for DNA replication, if the proteins are not produced, uh, re, uh, required proteins are not produced during S, uh, G1 phase for the synthesis of DNA, they will not be allowed to move there. So, the different uh, factors and proteins involved in this G1 S phase checkpoint are PRB2, E2F, PRB and E2F, retinoblastoma sensitivity protein, E2F, these are the most common type along with that remember what kind of CDK cyclines if you recall if you have watched my cyclin CDK video you will recall that CDK4 and CDK6 in association with cyclin D is involved in the transition of G1S phase. Okay? Now second one is intra S and in intra S phase they actually check whether the DNA replication is done properly or not. If the DNA replication is not done properly and if there is any sorts of damage and generally this damage is sensed by ATM, ATR sensing, sensory mechanisms, ATM, ATR. Along with that they are involved with CHK1 and CHK2. On the other hand there is G2M checkpoint where after the DNA replication is done they check whether there is any DNA damage or not. If there is DNA damage then the CHK2 mode is involved along with that P53 is involved along with that MDM2 is involved P53 MDM2 uh, P21 they are involved all, all the way together. On the other hand the last one spindle assembly checkpoint in the last one this is where they checks whether the mitotic spindle from the opposite pole are properly connected to the kinetochore or not that means the tension coming in from both the poles are equal or not and if one side is lacking tension then that is a negative signal that means the checkpoint will stop the cell cycle. So in spindle assembly checkpoint there is also involvement of protein known as uh, let me take a different color let me take a red one here uh, securin separase ok these proteins are involved ok and there are other components other components are MCC and other components are there uh, we will talk about that later. So this is the overall these are the overall checkpoints and remember as I said earlier as well that even before starting of the cell this G1S checkpoint is very important why because even before starting of the cell cycle if the receives if the thinks there is any problem if the first checkpoint gets any problem then what they do is that they will keep the cell in the G0 state which is known as a regulatory stage this is here G0 state okay and in G0 state the cell will not divide and the cell may be present there in the G0 state for a long period of time even some cells are present in the G0 state throughout their life like nerve cells of our body. So these are the different checkpoints as I say the checkpoints has a job what is the job in very simple terms they will check for things. G1S phase will check whether the proteins are ready which will be required for the DNA replication. Intra S they will check whether the DNA replication is done properly or not, it is going on properly or not. Okay. G2M checkpoint will check whether the number of DNA is doubled properly or not. Then spindle assembly checkpoint will check whether the tension of the microtubule coming in from the opposite pole to the kinetochore is properly maintained or not. And if they find any mistakes then they will stop the cell cycle then and there and once they stop the cell cycle they will recruit P53 which is known as the guardian of cell cycle protein like P53 which is also known as tumor suppressor genes right. So P53 they will recruit P21 which is a cyclin inhibitor. So either they will in, uh, produce cyclin inhibitor to inhibit cyclin and if the cyclins are inhibited the cell cycle progression will be halted we call it as a cell cycle arrest or cell cycle checkpoint arrest. Apart from that then they will try to fix the problem if there is a DNA damage single stranded damage double stranded damage P53 will be activated then they will try to solve the problem with DNA repair mechanisms and if they fail to do so then what they will do is finally they will trigger another round of pathway known as apoptosis or programmed cell death that will kill the cell deliberately. So these are the different functions of different cell cycle checkpoints. Now let us talk about 
two such example of functions played by two vital checkpoints one is this g1s checkpoint and the second one is the spindle assembly checkpoint let's talk about that the g1s checkpoint in this i said that prb e2f this proteins are involved and they play important role see this e2f is very important protein this is a kind of transcription factor and this transcription factors allow the synthesis of uh, enzymes that are required for the dna replication okay so e2f should be present in order to move from g1 to the s phase otherwise it cannot be done now by default in the cell by default e2f is blocked it's blocked by whom by retinoblastoma sensitivity protein prb prb masks the active site of e2f it blocks it now what happens is that this g1s checkpoint what what this cyclin that is cdk4 and cdk6 along with the cyclin partner cyclin d together so this cdk4 6 with cyclin d together phosphorylates retinoblastoma sensitivity protein as it they phosphorylate retinoblastoma sensitivity protein this phosphorylation of prb makes it inactive and then they will tag polyubiquitin and they will degrade the prb as a result now what happens this e2f e2f is now free means it is active means e2f can do all the work that is production of replication enzymes so as they produce replication enzymes the cell will progress it's ready to progress from g1 to the s phase because the cell is being prepared for the s phase to handle the s phase so this is what is checked in g1s okay g1s checkpoint now the last one is also very important that is spindle assembly checkpoint and i told you earlier that the spindle assembly checkpoint is regulating whether the segregation of sister chromatid will be done or not okay and when the signal is turned on when the tension coming in from the opposite poles are equal to the kinetochore if the tension is lacking from either of the sides then that is the alarming signal the checkpoint will stop the movement of cell cycle from m phase to the a phase means the meta phase to the ana phase okay so what happens is that again in the spindle assembly checkpoint let me draw very simple things again to separate remember the cohesins are there that holds the sister chromatids together in the kinetochore right so this cohesin cohesin is there it holds holds remember chromatids now this cohesin can be destroyed can be degraded by an enzyme known as separase 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 why separase because it separates sister chromatids so separase is an enzyme that destroys cohesin it destroys cohesin as a result sister chromatids will be segregated but the separase is present in the cell but separase is not active why because again the same idea here like like the earlier one the separase is blocked it is prevented by what by another known as securin 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 prevents separase to de destroy cohesin so once securin is present it will not allow separase to be released and if separase is not present cohesin is intact sister chromatids are intact now what happens here is that once the metaphase plate is organized the sister chromatids the the chromosomes are present in the metaphase plate and the microtubules are connected from both the poles to the kinetochore and if there is proper connections made then there is activation of a complex of protein known as apc anaphase promoting complex apc as anaphase promoting complex is active there are multiple proteins involved together this apc once it's activated this apc will polyubiquitinate securin it will polyubiquitinate securin and as will as it puts ubiquitin tag to the securin then soon or later the securin will be destroyed securin will be degraded by proteasome mediated degradation so as securin will be degraded as securin is gone separase is now free free separase will destroy cohesin as a result the sister chromatids cannot be held back together they are now ready 
to be separated and the microtubules are properly connected to the kinetochore so they will drag them to the opposite side with the help of other kinesine and dynein those proteins are also involved in this process the motor proteins so these are in the very simple terms how this checkpoints work so remember if there is any issue if there is a tension lacking kinetochore and if one side of the kinetochore is not properly connected to the microtubule coming in from that pole then what will happen that tension lacking kinetochore is signaled by checkpoint kinase chk this checkpoint kinases will recruit they will recruit other proteins okay and those protein will try to fix the issue and if the issues are not fixed then the cell cycle will be halted is arrested at that moment then the apc's job is not being done apc will not be activated in that situation apc cannot do its normal function so mitotic phase or m phase cyclin will be present because apc's other job is to also degrade degrade and destroy cyclin d not sorry cyclin b which is the m phase cyclin so apc e polyubiquitinate securin also polyubiquitinate cyclin b which is the m phase cyclin as a result of which it progresses from m phase to the uh, meta phase to the anaphase but if there is any issue they will stop the cell cycle that's what is known as cell cycle arrest and whenever you see this term cell cycle arrest that means the cell cycle checkpoint is there and checkpoint stops the cell cycle to move and proceed further and that's really important because we need to fix the issues once the issues are fixed then only the cell will move from that step to the next step further so this is how the cell cycle checkpoints work okay and the cell cycle checkpoints are really important because if the checkpoints fail then a normal cell will turn into a cancerous cell very soon okay so that's all about cell cycle checkpoints if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye